I'm Logan, the 60 boy with the gear jammer skill, back with you for another episode of Toy Talk. Lisa Motorline's origin and founder remains a mystery to me. If anyone out there knows anything at all about Lisa Motorline's, please let me know down in the comments. I couldn't find anything about Lisa Motorline's, except Lisa became a subsidiary of FFE. Frozen Foods Express Industries. Smash the like button for what I do know about Lisa Motor Lines. On April 10th, 2009, Frozen Food Express Industries has announced the day-to-day -day operating functions for Lisa Motor Lines have been relocated to the FFE Transportation location in Fort Worth, Texas. Lisa Motor Lines is a temperature controlled truckload carrier that also specializes in providing dedicated services within the Frozen Food Express Industries family of companies. Lisa Motor Lines and its divisions, Middle Transportation Company and Great Western Express, were using a terminal, offices, and a repair shop owned by the parent company in. Fort Worth, Texas. Since that's all that I know and all that I could find about Lisa Motor Lines, let's skip on over to the Rock Quarry and talk about the DCP Fallen Flag series for Lisa Motor Lines. After the review, I'll talk about Lisa's parent company, FFE, Frozen Food Express. And here we go, guys. This is the Peterbilt 352 COE with a single bunk cab pulling a vintage 40 foot reefer van for Lisa Motor Lines Inc. of Fort Worth, Texas. It is in the DCP by First Gear Fallen Flag series. The item number of this one is 60 1085. And there it is out of the box. Isn't that beautiful? The blue and white two tone cab and the white trailer with the blue reefer. Now, I'm gonna start off with the trailer and talk about that. It's a nice, heavy die cast trailer that was done way back when DCP first came out with their original vintage truck, the International Transstar 2. This one is painted in white and it has the Lisa Motor Lines graphics up there on the front. These are the older Lisa Motor Lines. It doesn't have the Texas logo on the trailer like they did later. This is the older graphics. It's got a silver stripe painted across the bottom, marker lights across the top, and a silver roof. It rides on 10-hole chrome wheels with soft rubber tires on them. They're modern wheels instead of old bud style like they should be, but they look pretty good on this trailer. It has screw-down type landing gear. You can see the fuel tank there hanging under for the reefer. And then going underneath, you can see it has a kingpin that's cut up into the hole, which was something that they did wrong on making these trailers and they've never fixed. You can see that landing gear. It has black braces on it. The rest of it's painted silver underneath. There's a loop right here, and that's a hanger for the air and electric lines that go on the rear tandems, which on the real trailer slide on the model they don't. The rear axles here have air brake canisters and axle detail. Also a working rear suspension on them. Left side it has T625. That's the trailer number. Batteries for the reefer and airline hookup lines. Now they don't really hook up but they're there. Has a nice vintage Thermo King reefer trailer. Thermo King logo and Thermo King written out on top. Heading around to the back, we have the Texas logo Lisa Motor Lines on the mud flaps, on both mud flaps, and the mud flaps are painted in white. Brake lights and turn signals, tampoed on. Roof clearance lights, tampoed on. The big Lisa Motor Lines tampoed on the white doors. It's also another trailer number, T625, and a little door you could open just to check on the load. Hinges and the cam locks are also tampoed in silver. Now, these doors do open to reveal a detailed refrigerated interior. 
It's got the refrigerated insulated walls, the insulated floor, and then just the standard roof. They did a great job on this trailer. It's also a pretty heavy trailer. Close up those doors. Now on the passenger side, you can see with the screw down landing gear, it sits level just like it should. Here's the Lisa Motor Lines Inc. logo. And then it has a silver stripe here with the door cut out. Well, the door is just tampoed on the cam lock and the hinges are all just tampoed on and they didn't even finish the cam lock. They just put the latch should be more to that, but it's just tampoed on because they don't have the tooling. It'd be nice if they had the tooling, but they don't have it. Then you can also see the beaded sides on the trailer and the rivet detail. Really good job. Now let's go on and look at the tractor. It is the relatively new tooling for them, the Pete 352. Well, it came out before the K100 and it has a few flaws to it. Like it doesn't really clip in place like it's supposed to. It also doesn't exactly fit down flat like it's supposed to. But it's pretty good. I think Neo did a better job than DCP, but there's a difference. This one is die cast, whereas the Neo one is resin on a die cast frame. It has the Lisa motor lines and the Texas logo on the door. Truck number of 708. Peterbilt logo, marker light. Then it's got your turn signal. And here is your mirror and there's a spotlight. Now this has the chrome battery box, air tanks there, chrome fuel tank, chrome exhaust, chrome quarter fenders, and chrome wheels with soft rubber tires. Grab bar here is not the loop step, it's just the grab bar. And then there's the other step right there on the battery box. I like this better in the model because it's just less likely to get broken. Then there is also the step, extra steps you get in. The vent door and door handle, vent for the sleeper and door handle for the toolbox door are all just painted in silver. The cab is this white base with the blue striping and then a gold pinstripe around the blue. It's hard to see the gold, but it is there. It just kind of blends in with the blue, but it is, it is right there. Underneath, we have the bottom of the white motor, black transmission here, drive shaft between the axles and the transmission, rear differential detail, really nice, air brake canisters on each axle, working rear suspension, positionable front wheels, not steerable, positionable, but that's okay. You can see the bottom of both fuel tanks here, and then over here you can see the bottom of the air cleaner. Kind of hard to see because it's painted blue, just like the rest of the frame and other parts. Up top, we can see a diamond plate deck plate. It has its air lines and electric lines coming up from under the kit frame to a pogo stick and then just kind of dangling there. I'm not the biggest fan of this, but I know a lot of people like it, so that's good. It has fifth wheel. That's just a little plastic part that pivots just like the real ones doesn't slide it'd be cool if it did but it doesn't you can see the twin breathers twin exhaust stacks up on the roof here you can also see it has two air horns chrome plated individual bullet style roof lights they are individual pieces that were chrome plated then they painted a little bit of orange on the tips so it has the amber lenses and then they applied them one at a time in a final assembly also up here, very classic of the 70s, is a rooftop air conditioner with a little black fan on top. Really, really sharp. You can see the rivet detail all around the cab and across the roof. Awesome. And body matched blue visor on the front. Now around front, you can see that visor there. It has the windows, which are hard plastic on this one, then they got some little black outlines for gaskets and for the bar that makes it look like the two pieces on each side. The big center bar here is die cast into the cab for structure. And then there's their Peterbilt logo tampoed right there. The little grab bars are just tampoed silver. They're cast in some rivet detail cast all around truck number of 708 on both sides of the grill. And here you've got 
individual jewel style headlights that are mounted in the chrome pods and then applied to the truck. Really nice how they did that. It has the nice tapered bumper that's chrome plated with two driving lights painted white. Over here on the passenger side, you see the other exhaust stack, grab bar. This has a loop step instead because it doesn't have the battery box, so it just has the loop step. That's another chrome piece, chrome fuel tank. You see the air cleaner back there, step, grab bar, chrome brackets to hang the mud flaps, and then white mud flaps with the Lisa Motor Lines ink in the Texas logo on each mud flap tampo. Real cool. The brake lights are just red tampos right there. Now you can see on this guy here, the twin breathers and the twin exhaust stacks. Really, really nice. Now, what's odd about this one is most of the trucks, the exhaust stacks were mounted on the back of the cab. This one's actually got them on its own bracket. So when the cab tilts, see, the exhaust stay. Some of them go the other way. Under the hood, you can see the detailed six cylinder diesel engine. And there we go. That is the DCP by First Gear Fallen Flag Series Peterbilt 352 COE with 40 foot vintage dry van for Lisa Motor Lines Inc. of Fort Worth, Texas. Frozen Food Express was founded in 1945 by two uncles of Stoney M. Stubbs Jr joined shortly after by his father. FFE's main assets were operating rights in Texas and a handful of trucks. From the beginning, the company was a specialist in transporting products requiring refrigeration. Because refrigerated tractor trailers or reefers cost nearly three times as much as regular trailers, and burned a good deal more fuel, big trucking companies were willing to leave this niche market to the smaller truck lines. Frozen Food Express Industries was formed in 1969, at which time the prior Frozen Food Express became its subsidiary. Frozen Food Express expanded rapidly in the late 1960s, by taking advantage of the decentralization of the meat processing industry and the growth in the popularity of frozen convenience foods and fresh produce. Frozen Food Express went public in 1971, starting a path to being one of the largest refrigerated carriers in the country. Deregulation in the 1980s presented new challenges for the transportation industry. Frozen Food Express survived. Of the 45 publicly owned trucking companies listed before deregulation in the industry's leading trade journal, 33 were gone by 1987, but FFE remained. In 1988, Frozen Food Express acquired certain assets from Lisa Motor Lines, Inc. of Fort Worth, Texas for $4.6 million. These included operating rights, 32 tractors, 132 refrigerated trailers, and a tank trailer. By 1991, Frozen Food Express was the nation's largest publicly owned nationwide full-service motor carrier of perishable commodities in the United States. Frozen Food Express had more of its share of ups and downs. Having survived deregulation in the 80s, FFE has continued to grow until 2013. <laughs> That's when the most recent development for FFE Industries was for the owners of KLLM to purchase Frozen Food Express Industries. This could lead to the creation of the overall third largest refrigerated carrier in North America. Guys, while supplies last on this limited run model, get one with the link down below. And also go on and get my free checklist on the entire DCP Fallen Flag series 
so that you can collect them all. Thanks for watching. Please go on and smash that like button. Share this video with your followers and subscribe for more great diecast product reviews. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.